Hi, I'm T-Rex, successful, slightly famous autistic adult, and welcome to my open source special needs devices booth. When I was in college, I met a child named Michael, 14 year old boy who had no fine motor control. And because he was unable to communicate, I thought he wasn't smart, not for very long. And it made me upset with myself that I should have such an awful thought. I decided that I could build a device kind of similar to this that would enable him to communicate. And I did. And I built a second device for a pre-literate child named Tyler, who was entering kindergarten, uh, also nonverbal. And for him, we used icons. So like if you wanted to say chocolate milk, that would be glass and brown. If you wanted to say apple juice, that's glass and gold. So uh, Michael's device was wildly successful. He went from being in a classroom where they just showed him Disney movies every day, all day, to a normalized seventh grade classroom. And Teller was able to enter kindergarten and I didn't, both of the devices were set up so that the parents and teachers would be able to reconfigure it to whatever needs they wanted. These were both full language communication systems. So they were capable of reproducing any English words or phrases. I ended up uh, having to change my master's thesis to cover these devices, which as my thesis advisor said, were better than anything this university had ever put out in either the master's or PhD program. And my thesis defense was pretty easy. Uh, and I knew at that point, no matter what I did for the rest of my life, I will have been a good human. Going forward, life got busy. I'm autistic. I tend to follow the flow with what's in front of me. And I decided that when I retire, I was going to go back to building these devices full time. Then in the fall of this year, I decided to stop waiting and start building them. So uh, I arranged on my vacation to meet at a adorable three-year-old girl named Moana, who is also nonverbal. When she's hungry, she gives no indication. When she's thirsty, she gives no indication. So the idea is that I take the human factors that I built for Michael's device, kind of squeeze it down to three-year-old size and make it so that it's a kind of association board so that instead of the caregiver giving her Food periodically, the caregiver starts by pushing the button for snack Cuddle. and then giving her the snack. And the idea is that eventually she'll build an association. Now, because this whole time is she would have just gone over the caregiver and pulled the caregiver shirt, the caregiver would have gotten food and all of that. It's a long haul. It really is. But that said, she got the device three weeks ago. The caregiver pushed the button, yeah. had the shiny lights, the sound, the animations on the screen, and there was no reaction at all. The button vibrates. And you could see her eyes light up when she felt the button vibrate. And then she starts pushing all the buttons and crawling over like it was the best toy ever made. Her needs will likely change. And as they change, this device is programmed in Python. So it's very easy for us to reconfigure it. It is set up to be a capable of uh, full language communication. So if you can do it with eight buttons and a screen, we can do it for her. The build materials of this device is approximately $120 anywhere on earth has some circuit boards that can be soldered together by any one of medium skill. So there's someone in kind of every neighborhood that has someone with an unmet need and the software is easily changed. It's 3d printed, obviously. So we can have people on the ground who know these people with unmet needs and kind of work together to configure them and not have to ship it around the world and have it so that the communities can build and we can grow much faster than just 
a group out of Los Angeles can. This device looks like it's going to be useful for a lot more people than I ever thought. There might be three people in my neighborhood school who might be able to benefit from that, but I digress. Our goal is to meet unmet needs that we know about because I can build the shiniest object that no one uses and it's not as valuable as a rock that someone uses every day. And along those lines, I've been communicating on Reddit on the autistic forum and I got into contact with an autistic woman who suffers from selective mutism, which means that when she gets stressed, she can no longer speak and she loses some of her fine motor control. She may already have one of these autistic badges like I have. And I thought to myself, I think I can fit the whole circuit board, thicker obviously, into the size of the badge. And last week I did. So it's got a screen the size of a QR code, a cell phone speaker, and a rotary encoder, kind of like this, but smaller. And the idea is that Let you just have to smack it. She can probably smack it on her second or third try. And then when that happens, it will communicate whatever instruction she wants. There's a little screen. There could be instructions for other people, depending on who they are, to rotate the button and Time. push it and get specific instructions for whatever the need is. This one looks like it has a bill of material of about $25 and it gets better. It also means that people who want to join the project and help out can have a development system that fits in their pocket. And when they're bored at the airport, they can pull it out and start coding for good. And wait, there's more. If I make it so that it has little easily soldered pins, you could put it into a carrier board and that carrier board can have any size screen and any configuration of buttons. And now instead of meeting just one person's need with the five circuit boards you get minimum anytime you order circuits, you can come up with five custom solutions. Looking forward to working with you and meeting more unmet needs as we go forward.